And even though the jury did not hear the 911 tape of the previous domestic violence incident between Mr. Smith and another female, the court can consider uh, that along with the police report and disturbing photographs of abuse to your minor child by the victim in this case. On the day of the incident, Ms. Johnson, I believe that you took all the necessary steps to ensure your safety after Mr. Smith had threatened to inflict bodily harm, harm upon you. And it does not matter that you stayed out all night or even if you stayed out for a week and leaving your children with whomever. That does not constitute that somebody would threaten you with serious bodily injury. Uh, Ms. Johnson, you called the alarm company, you called local law enforcement, not once, not twice, but three times. And when law enforcement arrived, they allowed you, the two people in this situation, to go into the home unescorted without any cooling off period, which resulted in the loss of Mr. DeMonte Smith and resulted in your conviction for voluntary manslaughter. So when considering the aggravating and mitigating circumstances of this case, the court is required to impose a sentence that is sufficient, but not greater than necessary. So Ms. Johnson, I will sentence you as follows. As to voluntary manslaughter, I will sentence you to 20 years to serve 10 years in confinement the first five years of those 10 years to be served in prison and the remaining five years to be served as home confinement. The remaining 10 years of the 20 year sentence will be served on probation. Special conditions of the five years of home confinement is that you must be fully employed. You can only leave your house for work, medical appointments, school, and for minor children, school appointments, minor children's therapy appointments, and minor children's school-sponsored activities. The hours of your work, school, and medical are only to be between the hours of 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. And there is to be no one at your home at any time during the duration of your sentence who has a felony conviction. As to count three, the aggravated assault, it will merge into count two, voluntary manslaughter by operation of law. As to count four, aggravated assault, I will sentence you to 10 years to serve, to run concurrent with count two. As to count five, the possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony, I will sentence you to five years to serve consecutive suspended. As to count six, cruelty to children in the third degree with the victim being Nyla Clark, I will sentence you to 12 months of probation to run concurrent with count two. Special conditions of probation is that the minor child is to see a licensed therapist, counselor, or psychologist twice a month for 12 months and that you are to attend and successfully complete parenting classes for 12 months. As to count seven, cruelty to children in the third degree with Nuri Clark, I will sentence you to 12 months on probation. Conditions of probation, special conditions of probation are that that minor child also is to see a licensed therapist, counselor, or psychologist twice a month for 12 months, and that you are to complete parenting classes. Uh, I will sentence you under the First Offender Act, and I need to advise you, Ms. Johnson, of your rights post-conviction. Ms. Johnson, you have the right to seek post-judgment relief from your conviction of the crimes of voluntary manslaughter, aggravated assault, cruelty to children in the third degree, and possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. By either making a motion for a new trial in this court and or filing an appeal to a higher appellate court. If you want to file a motion for a new trial or appeal, then you would need to file the said motion or notice of appeal with the clerk of superior court of this county, DeKalb County, within 30 days. 
you may want to more fully discuss this with your attorney. If a motion for new trial is made and the court denies it, you will have 30 days from the filing of the order of denial in which to file with the clerk of court your notice of appeal. Ms. Johnson, you have a right to have an attorney represent you on the motion for new trial and the first level of direct appellate review. And if you cannot afford to hire an attorney, the court will provide you an attorney and a transcript of your trial at no cost. Ms. Johnson, uh, in a felony, you have a period of four years from the date of your sentence in this court. Uh, in this court, because final to file a habeas corpus petition. And with the misdemeanors, you have a period of one year uh, from the date of your sentence in this court. becomes final to file a habeas corpus petition. Do you have any questions for the court, Ms. Johnson? I don't. Okay. Judge, would you explain to Ms. Johnson what it means to be sentenced on the first offender? So, Ms. Johnson, under the first offender statute for your sentence, so in this matter of the state of Georgia versus Quanisha Johnson, uh, the defendant has requested a sentence under First Offender Act. The court has approved that request uh, and will hold adjudication and will hereby impose the following terms under the First Offender Act, which I have placed on the record. Ms. Johnson, if you, as a defendant sentence under the First Offender, violate the terms of this sentence, the court may enter adjudication of guilt and proceed to sentence you to the maximum sentence provided by law in this matter. And I believe that is the maximum sentence would be 20 years to serve in custody for voluntary manslaughter, up to 20 years to serve in custody for count four, four the aggravated assault. Uh, 12 months in custody for count six and seven separately for the cruelty to children in the third degree and five years uh, to serve consecutive for the possession of the firearm during the commission of a felony. However, if you are so sentenced, you will be However, in this case, you will receive credit for the time that you have served. And if you successfully complete your sentence under the First Offender Act, you will not have a conviction for the crimes in this case. I believe I explained. That's in your name. And, and then I just want to make sure Ms. Johnson gets credit for the time she had served when she was initially arrested and then the rearrest on a grand jury arrest warrant. Do you know those dates, Mr. Sterling? I, I know it's approximately 62 days. I, don't I, I believe that's correct, Judge, and I can send um, Ms. Green the exact dates. Okay. And, and one more motion from the defense, Your Honor. Uh, we are going to move forward with an appeal in this case, so I would request at this time that Ms. Johnson be granted an appeal bond and be uh, allowed to stay out on the current conditions, the current bond she has. Uh, uh, the current bond conditions and bond that she's posted be allowed to stand, stay out on an appeal bond pending our appeal of uh, the verdict uh, and sentence in this case. What are the current conditions of her bond? She's got a forty-five. She's got a forty thousand dollar bond that was initially set on the uh, arrest, the malice, murder, and the cruelty to children. Uh, and then she, Your Honor, had her post an additional five thousand dollar bond on the grand jury arrest uh, arrest warrant. Uh, and currently, Judge, the, well, the initial conditions, and I don't think they've been modified yet, but we sort of consented to it, was that she could be reached. She, initially, she couldn't be talked to her children, the ones who were witnesses to the incident, but we kind of agreed that she should be reunited with her children. I believe those were the only conditions of the, the initial bond. I did not place her on house arrest? No, Your Honor. Your Honor, did the state be heard on the appellate bond? Yes. Uh, Your Honor, the state would object to the appellate bond in this case. Um, specifically, um, the jury found her guilty not only of a crime, but of, of a taking of another person's life, of killing of another person's life um, in this case. And I understand Mr. Sterling's argument is that she should be reunited with her children, but 
Mr. Smith will never be reunited with her children, with his children. Um, and I understand Mr. S Mr. Sterling's argument that they are going to file an appeal in this case. Um, but the jury, as it stands now, has found her guilty of voluntary manslaughter. So the state would be asking for remand to start today, um, as it stands. I will allow Ms. Johnson to remain out on the bond that she already has uh, for as you file an appellate. Well, I will allow her to remain out on the bond as you file an appeal in this case. Uh, however, there are going to be additional conditions to that bond in terms of um, she would need to be on house house arrest during the time, during the pendency of this. Uh, conditions of the bond are that she uh, can only leave to and from for medical appointments for herself or with the children and for therapy for the children during the pendency of this as well as Mr. Shaw, I understand the state's position uh, that uh, the state is opposed to any appellate bond in this case, but given that the court is going to allow her to remain out on bond during the pendency of the appeal, are there any special conditions that the state would like uh, the court to add? I believe, Your Honor, um, we, would, we would like uh, Ms. Johnson to uh, remain in the state of Georgia, remain on house arrest, um, and uh, we would defer to the court regarding any other conditions, uh, and no firearms or weapons. Obviously, no firearms, no weapons, no contact with anyone with a, a felony conviction, and she must remain in the state of Georgia during the pendency of this appeal. And I know Ms. Johnson's actively looking for employment. She lost the job she had when the state arrested her on the grand jury arrest warrant. Uh, so I, I, the only other thing I would ask judges is that she be allowed to go to job interviews and seek employment while she's out on bond. And, and obviously to meet with her attorney. Okay. Yes, um, I will allow her to do that. Um, any job interviews would need to be between the hours of 8 a.m. to between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. Yes, sir. Might be through Friday. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Judge. Anything else? Nothing from the state. Okay. We're in recess. Thank you, Judge.